Could ham radio operators in the United States be getting privileges on the 8 meter band? Well, it's a possibility, and we're going to talk about that today. I'm Rob, N1NUG, a ham radio enthusiast. Now, admittedly, I'm not an expert on any of this, but I've kind of been bumping into this information over the last couple of weeks and thought I'd put a video together to kind of share it with you guys so that we can at least see what the effort is all about and maybe find a way that we can help make it happen. What is the 8 meter band? Well, I've come over here to everyone's trusted resource, Wikipedia, and pulled up the page. Now you can pull this website up and read it yourself. I'll leave a link in the description, but basically for ham radio purposes, the 8 meter band refers to the lower portion of the 40 megahertz band. Now, if you do the math, I think the 40 megahertz spectrum that we're actually talking about is really about seven and a half meters, but I think everybody's just rounded up because it's easier to say eight meter band instead of seven and a half. As of November of 2022, United States hams don't have any privileges in the eight meter band. If you scroll down through the article, you can see that there are a few countries that have been granted some access in this spectrum and have had it for a number of years. Slovenia notably being the first and then moving on with Ireland in 2018 as being the most recent, according to this. Now you can see there's some beacons here that you can tune into and look at if you're interested in. And then down here, there's some activity reports. And one of these is a United States station, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. There's some interesting propagation characteristics to be explored at around 40 megahertz. It's kind of a sweet spot and shares some propagation characteristics with the higher frequencies up around six meters, 50 megahertz or so, but also blends in some of those HF type propagation characteristics that you would get on say the 10 meter band around 28, 29, 30 megahertz. Now right now in the United States, hams don't have any inherent privileges on the 40 megahertz band. However, there are a handful of hams who have gotten experimental station licenses from the FCC to conduct propagation studies and collect that data and give it back to the FCC as part of a petition to change the rules to allow some spectrum there for regular ham radio use. We'll take a look at an article that is on the ARRL homepage. I'll leave a link to this in the video notes below in case you want to read this yourself in detail. Now, in a nutshell, the article mentions WL2XUP, which is an FCC Part 5 experimental station that's licensed to operate from Georgia between 40.66 and 40.7 megahertz. Now, you can go on and read the rest of the details here, but basically they are supporting the 2019 petition for rulemaking, which asked the FCC to create a new 8-meter amateur radio allocation on a secondary basis. So presumably, this experimental station and some of the others that have popped up on the air are providing data so that the FCC can analyze that and determine whether or not this is good usage for the spectrum. Hopefully, <laughs> they find that it is. And at the bottom of the article, you can see that the petition was originally filed by ARRL member Michelle Bradley, KU3N. In fact, if we click here, we can take a look at her website and read a little bit more about what's going on. Now again, I'll leave a link down below so that you can read all of this yourself in detail, but she goes on to explain who she is, what she's doing, and why she's doing it. Now if we take a look at this site, EI7GL's blog, you can see down here that as of November 19th of 2021, so pretty much a year ago from when I'm recording this video, there are seven experimental stations set up around the United States that are transmitting on eight meters. So as I said earlier in the video, hams here in the US don't have transmit privileges on 40 megahertz, but we certainly can receive. And I wanted to see if I could receive any of these experimental stations here at my QTH in Connecticut. So I grabbed my phone and plugged in all the call signs of the experimental stations into my Hamalert app. And then I grabbed my SDR Play software defined receiver, hooked up an antenna, hooked it up to my computer, and fired up WSJTX to see if I could receive the signals and decode the packets. 
Here's a screenshot from the ham alert running on my Android phone. On the first line of the notification, we've got the time that the alert was posted. And then next to that in bold is the call sign that I'm being alerted about. And then to the right of that in parentheses is the exact frequency and mode that was received by the receiving station. And then below that we get some more detailed information, like the call sign of the reporting station, the signal level that they received it at, and the software that they were using to make the reception report. And then on some of the alerts, we'll even get grid square information. So after checking out the info in the ham alert, I went over to SDR Uno and tuned to 40.680 megahertz or thereabouts. And you'll be able to see in here in the next clip that I was receiving an FT8 signal. Since I was receiving a signal on the frequency, I decided to start up WSJTX, which I've got linked up to SDR Uno. And as you can see here, was able to receive the FT8 packets from these experimental stations, or at least one or two of them. Now, because I was receiving a couple of stations and they were several hundred miles away, I thought that might be of interest to any of the people that are kind of following along with this experiment. So I decided to go in and enable the PSK reporter spotting in WSJTX so that my reports would be uploaded. And then after a little while, I went over to the PSK reporter website just to check the map and see what everything looked like. And as you can see, my station is here in Connecticut and it plotted out the two stations I was receiving, the one in Georgia and the one in Michigan. This is what I've been doing for the last couple of months. Whenever I get the ham alerts on my phone, I try to get everything set up on the computer and at least fire off a few packets through PSK reporters so that the people that are keeping an eye on this get my propagation reports and hopefully this helps make an informed decision as to whether or not hams can get transmit privileges on 8 meters. Now if this is something that interests you, you don't even have to have a ham license to kind of participate. All you have to be able to do is receive 40 megahertz and decode FT8 packets. And if you want to, you can upload your reports to PSK Reporter to help let the people know that you're hearing these stations wherever you might be. There's also a way that you can get involved with transmitting on the 8 meter band. If we take a look at the AE5X website, there are instructions here about how you can obtain an experimental license through the FCC. I'll link this down below in the video notes, but you can read through here and see for yourself what steps are needed to get involved. There's also an 8metergroups.io forum that you can join for more detailed information. I'll leave a link to that below too. So what do you guys think? Are you interested in 8 meters? And if we were to get privileges there, is it something that you think you would use? Let me know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.